Good morning, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Come on in the room. It is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. Time for us to magnify him. Time for us to bless the Lord. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Let us give the Lord what it is that he deserves and desires on this morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room for he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be adored. Good morning to you, Sister Terry, Sister Nicole. Good morning to you. God bless all of you. Thank you for coming in the room and sharing in this morning meditation. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Greet me as you come in. Good morning to you, Sister Natalie. Greet one another as you come into the room. Good morning to you, Sister Mary. Let me know that you are here and that you intend to be a participator, not just a spectator of the word of God that is going forth this morning. Good morning to all of you. God bless you, Sister Marcella. God bless you. Thank you so much for what you do for the woman of God in this wonderful ministry. God bless all of you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room, Minister Guyton. Thank you so much for greeting the people of God that are here. Good morning to you, Sister Elaine. God bless all of you. Yes, come in the room. Brother Terrence, come in the room. God bless you. Good morning to you. Sister Nimby, God bless you. Thank you for coming in the room. Thank you for sharing in this morning meditation. The Lord loves you so much. Thank you for what you do for the woman of God. All the time, I just bless God for you, for your prayers, for your contributions. Thank God for you, woman of God. Listen, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, and we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Lisa. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord God, for the excitement that you've given to us this morning to share this word of God. Lord, we thank you, God, for the zeal that you've given to all of us for, to do the works that you call called for us to do, Lord, yet while it is day. For night comes, Lord, when we're not able to do the work. So while it is day, Lord, while we have breath in our bodies, Lord, while we have been given the gift of life, we want to thank you, Lord God, for all, every opportunity that you've given us, Lord God, to speak a word to somebody for every opportunity that you've given us, oh Lord God, to share your word with somebody. Every opportunity that you've given us, Lord God, to plant the seed of salvation or water the seed of salvation in somebody's life, that somebody will be brand new in you. We thank you, Lord God, for this word that shall go forth with power and with might, oh Lord God. And I pray that you will bless the woman of God that's going to speak it out of her mouth, oh Lord God, that people will come to hear it and come to know you and love you in a mighty and special way. And Lord, because of this word, they will be different. They will be changed, Lord God. God. And it'll be one, one, one step closer, Lord God, to doing what you call for them to do. I give you praise and glory for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, I pray a special blessing on those that are watching all over the globe, Lord God, for those that are in Sierra Leone, for those that are in South Sudan, Africa, for those that are in Bahamas, for those that are in Trinidad, for those, my God, that are in Puerto Rico, for those that are in California, Nashville, Tennessee, for those that are in Texas, Dallas, and Houston, for those that are in Indianapolis, for those that are right here in South Bend, Indiana, Granger, Indiana, Mishawaka, for those that are right in our eat region in Elkhart, wherever you're watching from, I pray the blessings of the Lord will overtake you and begin to do the things that God has uh, allowed for you to do. I speak an overthrowing of what the enemy is trying to do in your life. We overthrow curses. We overthrow the sting of death. We overthrow every trip, trick and trap that the enemy has set for you. We overthrow that now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hindrance that has been put in your life to make you not be able to hear this word that is overthrown now. It is cast down now in the name of Jesus. Yes, your ears are opened to hear the truth of God. And the truth of God, it will set you free. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Sister Barbara, Sister Miller, good morning to you. God bless all of you. Sister Sherilyn, good morning to you. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is great. He is greatly to be praised. Listen, this morning I want to talk about, um, really what I'm talking about is not being one to judge somebody else. You know, I was having a conversation the other day and and it's, it's, it's easy for us to look at someone, it's easy for us because a person doesn't agree with us to immediately begin to say that they're wrong and immediately begin to condemn them for the things that they are doing. But I'm so glad today that everybody is not alike. I'm glad, uh, good morning to you, Evangelist Barker. I'm glad that I'm not like you. I'm glad that you're not like me because, because of the differences that all of us have. That is what makes up this great big world. The Bible talks about the differences that all of us have. We have the differences of gifts. We have differences of administration. We have differences of, admin, of ministry. And that's what makes this world so great. Isn't that right, Sister Sherilyn? I'm different. There, there are things that you do that, that I don't do. There are things that I do 
that you don't do. And it makes us different, but that's what makes us great. That's what makes this world great. That's what makes the body of Christ, Sister Anne, that's what makes that so great, that we are different. And just because we have we are different, we may have differences. And because we have, may have differences, it doesn't mean that what I do is completely wrong. It doesn't mean that what you do is completely wrong. But listen, when we're looking at things in the body of Christ, if there are things that you feel that I'm doing wrong, listen, the Bible says, listen, don't judge that. Maybe there's not, they, maybe I've got not gotten to the spiritual place that you are in Christ. Maybe that thing that has grabbed onto you and held onto you, it hasn't yet grabbed onto me yet. Because the word of the Lord says in the end that God is the ultimate judge. That you, you, you just don't fight and don't quarrel. A lot of times we fight over things and, and we spend our time and I'll say we waste our time fighting over things that really have no, they have no bearing on situations. We fight over things that really just don't matter, Sister Terry. And it's all because we may think that one of us have the answers to the, to the, to the situation. We may think that one of us have the, you know, we, we have the solution. We think that we have it. And so we have to be careful, mighty careful of being the one. I put in my comments that I'm not that one. I'm not that one. Listen, and I'm going to spend a lot of time fighting and quarreling and arguing over you because ultimately I understand that God is the ultimate judge. I understand that, listen, if there is a situation that is we're, we're, we're measuring it against the word of God, I pray about that thing and I allow God to grab onto it. But ultimately, I know that he is, come on, he is the ultimate judge. He is the one that's going to judge that situation. He's going to be the one that brings that thing out. He's going to be the one that brings that thing to pass. He's going to be the one that shows us what it is that we need to be doing in him. And I, you can't help it. I can't help it. But there's a scripture in the word of God that I found in Romans chapter 14. And um, the, the my main scripture that I'm going to look at is found in verse number 12, but I'm going to go from the, from the top and kind of paraphrase down to the bottom. Romans chapter 14, and just reads around like this. It says, accept the one whose faith is weak. Accept. That word right there is hard for many of us, especially when we are so strong-willed in our mind. But it says, accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. Now listen, this is just talking about eating here, or eating or drinking. And, but we understand this goes far more, um, it encompasses far more than just eating or drinking. Number four says, who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants should stand or fall, and they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. So to say the Lord is able, listen, if someone is weak in their faith, I cannot, by what I say, by my quarreling, by disputing over this matter, I cannot make them stand strong in their faith. What the Bible, what the scripture here is saying is, who am I to judge someone else's servant? Who am I to judge the power of God? Who am I to judge God's people? Who am I to judge God's children? And the, the word of the Lord says, number four, it says, the Lord is able to make them stand. It says, and they will stand. For the Lord is able then to prick their hearts or prick their spirits. If that's something that needs to be changed in them, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you yell at them, no matter how many Bibles you throw at them and hit them upside the head with, Come on, it's not going to work because the Bible is saying to us, we got to accept those who have whose faith is not strong. Then number five goes on to talk about days. As one person considers one day more sacred than another, and another considers every day alike. You know, each of them should be fully convinced in their mind, whatever you are fully convinced of. You know, some of us say that the Sabbath is on Saturday. Some of us say that the Sabbath is on Sunday. You can't condemn one who says Sabbath is Saturday and Sabado, Saturday, and the Sabbath is Sunday. Whatever you recognize the day is that you serve the Lord on, that's the day. You, if you're fully convinced of that, you be fully convinced of that. The Bible number six says, whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. See that what I just said? Don't be, don't be um, condemned because 
you use Sunday as a special day because the Bible says whoever regards one day as special to the Lord, so does unto the Lord. You put that day unto the Lord. Don't feel condemned about that. Don't let allow anyone to condemn you of something that you have put as sacred to the Lord. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains so does so to the Lord and gives thanks to the Lord. For none of us lives our lives alone and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Minister Guidance, it's not about the day. As long as you give, it could be Tuesday. You could choose Tuesday as that day that you consecrate to the Lord. It doesn't matter what the day is. You give that day to the Lord and you be fully convinced in your mind that that's the day that you're going to give to the Lord, that you're going to put that day aside. Then listen, many of us, Wednesday, Wednesday, what is Wednesday across the uh, community in the African-American community for, for churches? Wednesday is Bible st study normally. Normally it's Wednesday for Bible study. You're fully convinced that's the day you, you use for Bible study. Don't let anybody condemn you about that and say, well, nope, it shouldn't be Wednesday. It should be Sunday morning. No. Number nine says, for this very reason, <laughs> for this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Number 10 says, you then, why do you judge your brother or your sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we all stand before God's judgment seat. What he's saying is, why, why does it matter to you? Because the Lord is the judge. He's the one that's going to judge us. But number 11 says, it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will acknowledge God. And number 12 is where, I'm, where I want to stick my pen in. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. And so I'm saying, I will not be that one. I will not be that one that will pass judgment on those because I recognize that they, you, we all belong to God. Every last one of us belong to God. No matter what our spiritual level is, listen, the Lord has allowed us to walk in freedom. He's allowed us to walk in liberty. He's allowed us to do whatever it is that he's called. He doesn't, he doesn't make us uh, be a part of his kingdom. He, he gives us free will. But listen, we have to understand that um, we, we're, we're, we're judged by the life that we live. We're judged according to the word of God. But we also have to understand, listen, that in this life, there is a balance that we have to seek. And Paul here in these passages of scripture that I just read in Romans chapter 14 is helping us to see that there is a balance. But the Bible says, you know, there's, the Bible is clear on, on many things. Many things the Bible is clear on. The Bible says, listen, they're all unrighteousness. No unrighteousness shall enter the kingdom of God. So it says, don't, you know, don't participate in lewdness. Don't participate in hatred. Don't participate in um, bearing false witness, lying. Don't participate in committing adultery. Don't participate in killing. Don't participate in stealing. Don't participate um, in fornication. Don't participate in um, excessive drinking, right? Just do things with moderation. Don't participate in drugs. Don't participate in things like that. Don't partic participate in cussing, work, things coming out of your mouth. The Bible is clear on things like that. So those things we're not talking about. We're not talking about those things because we understand that the Bible also says to us that, listen, when you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things pass away. The whole new things come. And also we understand that when we are in the spirit, we live according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. And the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. We understand the fruit of the Spirit to be those things. And those things that I just mentioned earlier are not characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. So there's no debate about those things. There's no debate about those things. And so we recognize that we're not talking about those things. And so if you're walking around cussing everybody out, if you're walking around having hatred toward one another, if you're walking around with envy and strife and malice in your heart, you know, those are things that you don't, you don't, that's no, no, um, there's no debate about that. 
you understand, you recognize that those are not things of God and nobody has to tell you that those are not the things of God. You recognize those things for yourself. But there are other things that happen, you know, you know, should, should women cut their hair? You know, you're like some, somebody might be on the line saying, oh my gosh, she has short hair. You know, so then you want me to go put a long wig on because you want me to pretend as though I have not put a razor to my head. You know, certain things like that or, or, you know, should women wear pants? Should, you know, things like that, you know, should, you know, men not cut their hair? You know, we look at Samson and Delilah. So do we, do we pull out of the Bible that men should not cut their hair? Should we watch TV? Should we go to the movies? You know, some things we, we just come up with and we're saying, you know, if you do those things, you are not a child of God. Are those things in the word of God? So I believe that Paul is saying to us, listen, we got to be careful about how we judge. We got to be careful. You know, some, you know, a lot of times there are things, you think about these things that you've done your own selves. Things about that you've said to somebody else, like, ooh, you doing that? You a Christian? Those are things that you do as a Christian. Come on, we got to think about those things that we do and that we put on other people. And then we put these, um, I, I'm not going to say false commandments, but we put these things, our own ideology on people because of what we believe that we do, of things how we do it. So we got to be mighty careful of that. Um, and I would just say, you know what, I, I, you got to be very careful about how you judge one another. Because again, we are judged by the standard of the word of God, every last one of us. But in the end, the Bible says that every man has to give an account for himself. Every man has to give an account to the Lord for the things that they do in their body. Every man has to give an account. So, so again, we have to, um, let me just look at verse number two. Yeah, this, this is good. This is good. Sister Elaine. Because we, we look at that scripture, and I probably never read the whole thing all the way through. Because we look at, you know, verse number two, it talks about one, one person's faith will allow them to eat anything, but another person's faith is weak, so they only eat vegetables. So if your faith is such that you can eat anything, you know, why would you judge somebody else? Why would you judge somebody else? Paul was talking about, you know, something that was prevalent in the church back then. And when he was talking about the people, they had turned their backs on idolatry. And they, so they wasn't, they wasn't going to go near to anything associated with idolatry or with paganism. So they were making sure that, you know, because sometimes when you come out of a thing, so say, for instance, that you were addicted to drugs, just for an example, you're not going to go nowhere near that addiction. You've gone through the seven, seven step program. You're not going to go anywhere near that. You're not going to go around your friends that reminded you of that addiction. You're not going to go around anything that smelled like that addiction. You're not going to go around. You're not going to go to the stores that would allow you to buy paraphernalia that was associated with that addiction. This is what was happening back in that day. So they weren't going to do anything that was associated with bringing them back to that place where they were serving idols. It's the same like with us. And so you say, look, so what, so if you were addicted to something and say, say it was pornography, say it was, was, um, a sexual addiction, but you, and you know, for yourself that every time you turn on the television, there's some, some sexual connotation in a movie. There is something sexual going on, even in commercials, there's something sexual going on, even in cartoons. And you know, for yourself that every time you turn the television on, there's something happening that's sexual. And so it makes you then think about the thing that you used to do, the thing that you used to be caught up in, the thing that you used to have, have you bound and tangled up and twisted up in the ways of the enemy. And so every time you thought about turning on that television, you said, you know what, I, I may go back. I don't know if I can be strong enough in my faith not to go back to that thing that I was doing before with that sexual perversion, that spirit of sexual perversion that was on me. And so therefore you said within yourself, I will not watch television. I just won't watch it. I'm not going to the movie because of what is happening in there. I'm not going to do it. And then because of that thing, because your faith is weak, because you don't believe that God can keep you, can hold you through that, through turning that television on, because you know what's going to be on that television. You know there's going to be something sexual. You know somebody's going to be kissing. They're going to be hugging. They're going to be in the bed because that's what happens with TV today. It's going to be some, something going on. And then you put all that on somebody else. You put those standards on. On somebody else and then you begin to judge them because of that and then you say 
No one should watch television. You say, no, mm -mm, don't do it. Don't turn it on because of what's going on inside of you. But that doesn't mean that everybody does, is not strong enough to be able to turn the television on and look at that stuff happening and it, it just fall right over them because they recognize that God is able to keep them through it. God is able to hold on to them through that thing. And that's what generally happens sometimes. Why we, why we are so, why we cast judgment on people because of the thing that's going on inside of us. People are different. We got to realize that everybody around us is different. We are at different levels in our spirituality, different levels in our faith walk with the Lord. And the, so the Bible tells us, listen, we gotta, we've got to understand where we are, but then don't put where we are on somebody else. Don't do that. Listen, allow, allow your friend to go to the movie. And if they invite you to the movie, you, just, you can just respectfully say, I'm sorry, you go ahead, enjoy that movie. But that's just something I'm not just strong enough to do right now. I'm just not strong enough to do it. So we, we have to receive our brothers and our sisters, those who may be weak in faith. Why? Because all of us got issues. All of us got situations. All of us have things that we have to come to terms with. All of us do. And so as we receive our brother and sister through these situations that are happening in their lives, listen, instead of us placing the standard, our standard on them, we place the standard of the Lord, of the Bible on them. And we don't expect people to live up to our standards. We expect people to live up to the standards that the Lord has placed. Because what happens if I expect you to live up to my standards, it's going to cause a problem. It's going to cause a rift in my relationship with you. So don't, don't look at me. A lot of times, listen, a lot of times people from the standpoint of, of, you know, talk about in churches, we put pastors and evangelists and preachers and teachers and prophets. We put them up on these pedestals. We put them up high. And we expect them to live at these high standards. And then we ourselves, we look to them for how then we are to live our lives. But then the moment something happens, the moment they don't do something according to the word of God, and they tumble off of this high standard pedestal that you put them on, then one of two things happen. Either then you now have no more respect for them, absolutely no more respect for them because of what you thought you, what you, where you thought that you had put them, you have no more respect for them or you have no respect for the word of God because of where you thought God had them. But what we have to understand is that everybody is different and the standard that you need to live is not the standard that your pastor, your apostle, your teacher, your prophet, your evangelist, your bishop is living, but the standard that the Lord has told you to live. That's the standard that you ought to be living and recognize that all men, all women sometimes are weak and things happen, situations happen, but it should not cause division. It should not cause um, disunity in our church family, especially because sometimes when we don't live up to one another's um, ideas of what things should be, it causes division. The, the self-imposed standards that come to dominate our lives, those self-imposed standards that we have on ourselves. So if, if we are not careful, people of God, we will allow our differences to begin to separate us. If we don't think that somebody is doing something a certain way, if we don't believe that they, they're doing it the way that we ought to do it. But we have got to be, we have got to rise above that. We have got to be big enough to say, you know what? I'm going to give this thing over to the Lord. I want to walk together in unity and I want to give this thing over to the Lord because there are some things that you can simply do nothing about. And there are some things that only the Lord, my God, can work out. He can only work those things out in you because you don't want things hindering the church. You don't want things hindering your relationship with other people. Sometimes you just got to say, listen, every man has got to give an account for his own self. I can't continue. You can't continue to be the judge and the jury. In situations where you know the Lord has control. The Lord's Bible says, listen, why are you going to judge somebody else's servant? The Lord says, listen, I, I got this under control. He says, you just receive them. You just accept them. You accept them. The Bible says in that passage of scripture that I read that we got to respect them. We got to, listen, if we are believing, if we are believers, listen, whether we agree or not, we need to respect 
what other people's convictions are. We got to respect that. That's a, you know, a good word. I know we don't, may not hear that word very often, respect, because a lot of times we don't respect one another's convictions because it doesn't fit with what it is that we think it ought to fit with. We have to respect one another's convictions. I may not agree, but I respect it. We have to be able to give, pe give people room to live their life as the Lord leads them. We don't know what the Lord is saying to them. We've got to allow them room to live their life. We've got to respect their principles. We've got to respect their convi convictions. We've got to respect their position. Come on. We don't, we're not God. We didn't save you. We, you know, we, we, we may have planted the word of the, the seed of salvation. One of us may have watered that salvation. But the Lord came to save. He is the one that saved. So don't you know that this person's life that you're trying to judge, don't you know that it is, it is, God is working with that. He's dealing with it. He's not telling you to be concerned about it. He's, come on. So whatever you think a person's life, whatever you think about the believer's life, whatever you think he's doing or he's not doing, he's not accountable to you. He's not accountable to you. He's not accountable to me. He's not accountable to the pastor. Come on, he's only accountable to God. He's only accountable to God. Paul was talking about holy days. And, you know, Paul was saying, whatever day you choose, whatever's in your conscience, that's the day. You just use that day. Choose that day. He said, you're not bothered about doing it. Do it. To do it as unto the Lord. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Don't violate your personal convictions. What, don't allow somebody to, to help you, to tell you to violate your personal convictions. You do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. What are you doing? What are they doing to honor God? Is it something I can do to honor God? Is it honoring God or is it honoring the enemy? What are you doing to honor God? Are you doing it with a clear conscience? Come on, is, it, is there something wrong or evil in it? You got to ask these questions for yourself when you're doing these things or when somebody's trying to judge you. Because sometimes we, we're the judge. I'm not going to do that. But sometimes we're judging others and sometimes people are judging us. But you got to say, is this what if this thing that I'm doing that people are trying to judge me about? Is it glorifying God? Is there evil in it? Am I, is the Holy Spirit unctioning me not to do this thing? If there's no unctioning in your spirit, the Holy Spirit is not unctioning you not to do it. Come on, you stick to your consciousness. Is the Lord saying, go ahead? Every man has to get him an account. Come on, the Bible tells us we just refrain from things that are evil, refrain from things that are unjust, refrain from things that are not righteous. We know that. As Christians, as people of God, we are to walk in love. We are to walk in humility. Listen, we are to walk in those things that we are to walk in things that will uplift and admonish and encourage our fellow brother. Bible says above all things to seek peace. We are to do those things. So if something you're doing is not in that line, along that line of, of behaviors, characteristic of a Christian, then you know that it's not what God wants you to do. You don't need anybody to tell you that. You know that as a child of God, you knew that, you know that. Either you're walking along with God or, you, you're, or you're not. You understand that. Sometimes, listen, as believers, though, we do stumble. And we need someone to help us to get up. We do know that. Listen, when I get down all the way, I got to get out of here. I get down to it because I'm just talking about, listen, accepting those who may be weak in the faith and recognizing that we're not the judge. Recognizing that the Lord is the ultimate judge and let, knowing that we all are accountable for ourselves. I'm not accountable to you. You're not accountable to me. We are accountable to God himself. And as I look at the last part of that pastor scripture, as I leave out of this meditation on this morning, the Bible says, you then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? Why do you, why do you fight with them? Why do you quarrel with them? Why are you angry with them? This is for we all stand before God's judgment seat. You know, while we are here, while we are walking around this earth, we have to recognize and understand that 
We don't have the right to play God in the lives of our brothers and our sisters. We don't have the right to pass judgment on them. We don't, if, if you know, if, if a brother or sister is openly living in sin, yes, then we have an obligation. Hear me, people of God. We have an obligation to speak to them about their life. If they're openly living in sin, we have an obligation to speak to them. Because the word of the Lord says that to us. It says in Proverbs chapter 27. It says it in other places, but in Proverbs 27, verses 5 through 6, it says, Better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multi multiplies kisses. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. I mean, I love you, so I want to let you know that the things that you're doing, you're going through, listen, those are wrong things. I'm not judging. I'm just letting you know that there's clear, clear um, examples here of sin that you're living in. And when you live in sin, the Bible says when you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. So here in this case, we're not judging. We're just trying to help a situation out. We're trying to help a situation out. So if you're convinced that somebody is living in sin, you're convinced that they're doing the wrong, the wrong, the right thing for us to do is to pray for them. Pray for them and trust the Spirit of God that the Spirit of God will speak to their hearts. And it will. Come on, because, because if the power of God is working in them, if it's, we're talking about a brother or sister, if the power of God is working in them and is in their life, then maybe we are concerned about the thing that God is concerned about. So the, so, so the judgments, the things that we have self-imposed, self-imposed standards, let's keep those things to ourselves and let the Lord deal with it as we pray for them. Let the Lord open that situation up in their hearts, in their minds. Because the Lord will deal. He said, listen, the accounts are settled with the Lord. The accounts are settled with the Lord. Because one day, listen, Every person will have to stand before the Lord. Every person, every single one of us. Every single one of us. And it may be that we'll, so we'll find out everything wasn't as like we thought it was either. We may find out this, the thing that we thought was right may not have been right. That day will come that we'll all have a, a, a day of reckoning, a day of accounting. We may say, uh oh, I, I judged them about that thing and it wasn't right. So we need to all ask the Lord and pray for the Lord that he will help us to learn to stop judging our brothers and our sisters and to concern ourselves with us living the right life that we need to live before the Lord. Let's be more concerned about us living the right life because one day we're all going to have to answer to him. One day we will answer to him, all of us. I'm going to close with this scripture, Philippians chapter two, verse number two. Paul said this, and he says, wherefore, my brethren, my beloved, as ye have always beloved, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my presence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He said, if you're going to judge somebody, if you're going to judge somebody's life, let it be your own life. If you're going to be a blessing to somebody, come on, bless your brothers and sisters. Don't, don't, don't try to be judging. Don't set yourself up as a judge and a jury. But love one another. Pray for one another. Live your life that you can be a blessing to somebody else and not a hindrance to somebody else. Live your life that you've been a blessing. And if you thought, if you think that maybe you've been guilty of that, I'll say, I won't do that. If you think you've been a, guilty of that, putting your standards on somebody else, making them, you know, accountable because of the way you believe. Come on, we need to all, we need to all <laughs> repent of that. Because all of us will give an account one day. And I say, if you think about it, we probably do it all the time. We probably do it all the time. But there's a cure and that cure is repentance. We got to repent for it because there is help for us. There is help for us. And when we repent, listen, as Paul said, we got to work out our own soul salvation. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. Pray. Listen, let us be a blessing. Let's not judge, but let us be a blessing to somebody else. Not in hindrance. Let us be a blessing to somebody else. Let us repent. If we feel like we've been, we've been guilty of imposing our standards on somebody else. And let us walk in the liberty and the love that the Lord has for us. 
Father God, we just bless you. We thank you, O Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord God, for opening us up, God, to hear this word. Lord, that we will accept those that we have differences with, Lord, recognizing that we are not the judge and we are not the jury, Lord God, recognizing that the Lord is the ultimate judge, that we are accountable, Lord, to him and to him only. Lord, we thank you, my God, that as God, we have in the past, Lord, put our, imposed our standards on other people. Lord, we ask right now that you forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, of what we've done because, Lord, we recognize that in the end, Lord, it may not even be like we thought it was. We may have imposed God's standards on others, God, that may have been wrong, God, in your sight. And Lord God, because we may have imposed those standards that may have been wrong in your sight, Lord, forgive us for leading somebody the wrong way. God, forgive us for perhaps, God, leading somebody astray that maybe we hindered the move of God in their life because of the things that we said or how we judged them. So, Lord, we just ask for your forgiveness in that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, God, for being purposeful for us, oh, Lord God, as we continue to work this work that you call for us to work and walk the walk. Lord, as we talk the talk, Lord, let our let our lives line up, God, with what we talk about. God, let us, God, as Paul has said, God, always be obedient to your word. Always be, God, ready, ever ready, God, to be present for you, Lord God, that we, God, may God, be the people you've called us out to be, the called out people, the called out men and women of God. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Lord God. You called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us into the light, Lord God, where we can see, Lord God, where we can do what you call for us to do, Lord God. We can help somebody else. God, help us to be a blessing, God, even today, and not a hindrance, God, to the people of God that we come into contact with. And now, God, I pray, God, for healing for everyone under the sound of my voice, whatever it is that might be ailing you, whatever the illness is, oh God, we pray right now that people will be able could God leave the beds of affliction to pick up their beds and walk by their faith Lord God they have been made whole we bless you Lord God that faith heals on my mind in the mighty name of Jesus Lord we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus name we do pray amen amen people of God great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. It's a great day to open your minds, my God, to accept those that maybe you've had differences with. It is a great day to allow the liberty of the Lord to shine in your life. It is a great day to allow the truth of God to set you free this morning, that you will not, you yourself will not be hindered, come on, by the things that the enemy has tried to let you see that are not the truth. We love the Lord so much and I love you all so much. So you all have a wonderful day and you go in peace.